many mathematicians think that there is a mathematical reality. Most physicians, most physicists, think that uh, there is a, a material reality. Mm -hmm. But if I understand, uh, you you claim that uh, the physical reality is in some sense identified with the mathematical structure which uh, are part of the mathematical reality. So is there, um, I mean, if this uh, sentence is true, is there a way to, to see it? Uh, is there a difference in, in the world according uh, to if uh, this sentence is true or not? So this, the, the question of whether our universe is simply described, maybe approximately by mathematics, or whether it is mm. a mathematical object, really roughly boils down to the question of whether our universe has some mathematical properties or whether it has only mathematical properties. And I think it's very interesting if you look at some object like this beach ball, for example, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem very mathematical at all. It has properties like being made of plastic, and redness and softness and whatever, mm -mm. which doesn't seem mathematical. But then we know as physicists that this is actually just a collection of quarks and electrons. And sure. what, what properties do, does an electron actually have? An electron doesn't have a color or a smell. It, it, an electron has properties like minus one, one half, and one. And although we physicists have made up nerdy names for these properties like electric charge yeah, yeah, and I spin know. and electron number. The electron doesn't care what we call them. They're just numbers, mathematical properties. And it, as, of course, as you know, the same goes for the quarks and all the other particles. As far as we can tell, we haven't discovered any properties that they have other than mathematical properties. And that's everything in space. And space itself what has the property th three the dimension, number of dimensions, and it also has other mathematical yeah, properties yeah, like curvature and so on. So if we take seriously this idea that neither space you know, nor the particles in space have any properties except mathematical properties, then it starts to sound a little bit less ridiculous that maybe everything out there has only mathematical properties. Is mm -hmm a mathematical object. Well, the, the opposite view would that uh, would be that uh, mathematics is the way we have to speak about uh, the real properties of the universe. And, right. Uh, so, I don't know. I have uh, personally no opinion, but uh, I, I, what is, is there really a difference? Uh, are really the two opinions uh, so different? I don't know. I think you raise a very important point there that we have uh, we have to distinguish between the language of mathematics which we invent and the structures of mathematics which we discover. So yeah. if we had Plato here in the room, if we could bring him in, right? He, he was very interested in what now is known as the platonic solids. How many regular three-dimensional yes, yes, yes. shapes there are there? He figured out that there were five of them, right? The tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, yeah, yeah. the dodecahedron, mm -hmm. the icosahedron. He was free to invent the names, the language of mathematics for describing it. He could call it the cube or the schmoob or the flube mm -hmm. or whatever he wanted, but he wasn't free to invent a sixth platonic solid I because agree. it just doesn't exist. Yeah, and so, so this is what I mean when I say that, I, that the, we discover the structures of mathematics, like yes, you, but, not, that, but we invent the language. So I think the, this, the, what you mentioned there, our way of talking about it, that is all the language of it. I, I agree with you, but even that is a subject of controversy. Because Absolutely. You know, Kronecker, for instance, said that uh, God created the uh, uh, natural numbers. Exactly. And all the rest was invite, invented by man. I don't agree with that, but uh, some people defend that position. And even if you accept the mathematical reality, uh, to reduce the physical reality to mathematical reality is a further step. And That's very right. Great one. So I think the best way to make progress on this is to ask, what phenomena are there in in the world out there that we still cannot describe with mathematics? So, for, mm -hmm. so four hundred years ago, when Galileo said that nature is a grand book written in yeah. the language of mathematics, the only aspects of nature that they could describe well with mathematics really had to do with motion, parabolas and circles and so on. Galileo had no explanation for you know why. 
skin was soft and a nail was yeah, hard, yeah, well, well, right? Well. But then came the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics, which gave this beautiful description of atoms. And now we can calculate why skin is soft and why matter has the properties that it does. But there are still other phenomena in the world that we cannot describe well with math, like your, your consciousness, for example. Yes. So that there's a very interesting question there, I think, about whether this, this uh, gradual conquest of, that mathematics has made of, of phenomena of nature will eventually hit a roadblock where there is something left that it cannot mm -hmm. explain or whether it will ultimately explain everything. I know. We have so to wait and see, I think. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Well, I think that even if we believe that in principle, for instance, quantum mechanics could allow to, to describe the properties of the skin, we are very, very far even from that. And uh, uh, there is also a debate uh, about uh, what is called emergence. Yes. And uh, is it possible, in fact, to, to explain the properties of the skin of a microscopic object with the microscopic rules of quantum physics. And uh, not everybody agrees over on that. Absolutely. And if you are speaking about uh, uh, consciousness, uh, there is <laughs> this is still a, <laughs> a higher step uh, and a very interesting one. But, uh, well, there are some debates, but I think they are very preliminary at this stage. But... Uh, why not? I completely agree with all of that. I still think that Galileo would be very impressed, though, if he knew that after he made a big deal about how mathematical nature was, mm. Maxwell's equations would come and describe all properties of light and electricity and magnetism, and then we would get quantum mechanics, and then we would get relativity, which is beautifully mathematical, and then Peter Higgs and Bro Englert would sit yes. purely with mathematics again and calculate that if you built you know, the biggest experiment ever in Geneva and you scratched particles together in a certain way you would discover this new particle. Yes, yes. All of this was further success of mathematics which I think Galileo would have been very impressed by. I, I agree certainly and and uh, but this can be interpreted in many ways and you have this sentence by uh, Wigner you know the uh, yes. unrational uh, efficiency of mathematics in physics and so you give an explanation, which is a quite a radical one, because uh, if physics is mathematics, of course, we understand why it is so efficient. <laughs> exactly. But I think uh, this is quite radical. <laughs> That's right. I, so, so I'm, of course, not in the book saying this is how it is. I, yeah, what I'm know. interested in doing is exploring the whole spectrum yeah, of yeah. possibilities. And mm. you're right. This is one extreme possibility. Mm. And another extreme possibility is that that the mathematics is not fundamental at all, and then there are interesting possibilities in the, in the middle. I think it's always healthy to, to not shy away from looking at the whole spectrum of possibilities, and then ultimately the future will have to decide.